Good day, Eagles fans. Welcome back to the Inside Swoop, proudly presented by Jim Beam. And it is thrilling to be joined by Will Schofield after a win. Makes it a bit more pleasurable, Will. It does. I mean, I'm, I've got my weekly segment with Miss Simo, and I was getting a little bit concerned about coming in here if there was, the losses continued. But I was, I was confident they wouldn't. And, and yeah, it was a really, uh, it was, a, it was a showcase, I think, of what the club's trying to do from a ball movement perspective. So that was a positive. Um, still some stuff to work on, but a win's a win, isn't it? We'll certainly get there. But I wanted to throw a big dirty lure out for yourself early. How'd you like the start of the game, mate? So we had fellow teammates Jay Kennedy and old Jackson Nelson doing a lap of honour, Queen style. You had front row seats. What'd you think of all? Yeah, it was great, mate. I mean, Josh Kennedy, one of the greats of the game. I'm very good mates with Jacko Nelson. He's a Geelong boy. Um, grew very close to him as... Roommate, right? Ex-roommate? Yeah, yeah. He lived with us, uh, my wife and, uh, and myself, in our house in Leadable. So very close with Jacko. And I know Jacko would have felt awkward about being in that car because you see next to the, one of the greats of the football club. And Jacko's a modest, humble guy. But I think it was great to see them both out there um, in the back of the Audi. You still uh, no appearance at the lap of honour, No, I haven't. No, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, oh, Chris Marston and Lewis Jetta as well. Um, it was during COVID, mate, so I think... Uh, are, we, are we past it? I think we passed it. There were bigger casualties than you. If have. we ended up in the back of a car going around Optus, people would be like, what are these blokes doing? Basically, <laughs> I'd agree with that. Uh, you were boundary side, looking a lot sharper than what you currently are. Mm. So you had front row seats. What were the major differences that caught your eye throughout the game? Um, it's a good question. Look, I think the ball movement, as I said off the top, I thought um, it was just it just felt aggressive. There was a lot of forward handballs, um, which can get yourself into trouble when you're playing against a really good defensive side. I don't think GWS were at their best defensively, but the way they ran and carried and took the game on, and that's certainly a positive. I think fans watching that game, if that had have been a loss in the end, I think fans would have at least walked away knowing how West Coast want to play, which I don't think you could say the same against North Melbourne around round one. So that was the real positive, the ball movement. Um, but, but ball movement can only get you, you know, so far. You need to defend, you need to work together as a team. So getting on the same page and doing it consistently is the challenge to the footy club. Um, and whether that happens, time will tell, but it was certainly a step in the right direction. Tim Kelly began the game inspired, finished with 32 touches. Would you give him the three Brownlow votes on the day? Was he best on? Oh, certainly close. I mean, he was great around the, the stoppage, Which is um, where the they needed face. After, after last week. Yeah, and the way he started, right? So he had sort of five clearances in the first 10 minutes of the game, which really set the scene for the rest of the mids and the senior mids, right? Himself, Dom Sheed, Luke Chewy, Andrew Gaff. They all had good games and Tim Kelly was the leader there. He, he kicked a goal. Um, you know, these sorts of finishes aren't, they're not easy and that was never missing. So have that leadership, that, that senior cool head inside, it was really positive for the group. Again, you need to consistently do it for the group to keep going forward. The second quarter was just sensational viewing for anyone that bleeds blue and gold. Eight goal term, which is the first time since 2018, but it wasn't really the key forward figureheads that were doing the damage this time around. Yeah, um, it was a Jake Waterman show at stages there in that second quarter and I mean, you know, hats off to Jake. I'm pretty sure on this show, I said that he was potentially in last week, not just toot my own horn here. But S Simo's tuning in, mate. Don't worry about correct. that. Correct. So, um, look, I thought he was he was great. Uh, the big thing with having a Jake Waterman in the side is um, it means there's three genuine forwards. Um, now, and that's not no knock on Bailey Williams and Kel Jamison, but Jake Waterman's a forward. Um, Oscar Allen is a forward and Jack Darling is a forward. The other two guys are trying to split their time between ruck and forward. If you have three genuine forwards like that, it means the opposition, you're going to get stuck on one-on-ones and someone will get off the chain. So this week it was Jake, maybe next week it's Jack um, and, and Oscar will reap the benefits as well. I think Cripper and Long had sensational quarters as well. And despite the eight goals, Simo still not quite happy with the performance. So giving the water bottle an absolute treatment here. I've seen dummy spits of this variety knocking you off comprehensively in FIFA on the PlayStation. So yes. talk me through this one. He's well, been in the box before. Yeah. Is it that tense throughout? Well, I mean, emotions certainly run high. And, and, and no matter if you're in front or behind, you don't like giving up late goals. And that, and that was what that was about. Look, I, I, I think it's a good thing to see emotions from coaches. We saw a bit of commentary around Alistair Clarkson during the week. Um, I like that. I think Simo uh, cracking it when there's a goal scored against. I like that as well. You, you don't want robots in the game. So I think that's real. It's real emotion and um, it's positive. Was this one of the plays of the day, Scoey? The old Jack Darling nod to Cripper. Talk us through this one on the boundary in that second term. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a clear set part play, isn't it? They've emptied out space at the front of the stoppage. Jack's put it exactly where it needs to go and it still needs to be finished though, doesn't it? Um, Cripper, he knows his way around goals, but 
I often say um, when I'm covering games for West Coast, he's the best set shot outside 50. He's nailed that from about a metre out from the boundary. He's got plenty of them in his, uh, in his highlight reel throughout the time. Jermaine Jones started in the forward line against the Roos, went down back. Do you want to see him permanently stay there or do you still want him to be a flexible utility, plug in the gap that you need him? Um, what do I want compared to what the team needs is probably a bit def a different thing. Well, we were talking dream teams. Like, tell yeah. me what's best for wins and losses. Um, look, I think he needs to be flexible because there will be stages where he is needed in front of the footy. But clearly the game he played on the weekend, look, if he does that every week for the rest of the year, he's the All-Australian half-back flank. That, that is one of the better games. No, and that's not been, you know, you can't play much better than that as a half-back flanker. He defended well, um, but clearly his attacking side of his game was elite, took the game on, huge metres gain, somewhere in the you know, high 700s. I don't think he can do much more as a half-back flanker. So... The club will know that. Um, maybe there's been too much focus and Freo put someone to him. Well, we actually caught up with JJ during the week to discuss the transition going from forward to back. Let's have a listen. The process was just uh, at training, going down back. Simo just said, we'll swing you down there, see how you go, and train really well down there. Um, and then he just said after the training, mate, we'll just play you down. We'll have a couple other boys coming through the forward line, like Samo. Samo came back and played really well, and then you've got Longy as well. Applying that pressure down there, and he's been a really good fit. And so that just allowed me to go down back and play down there and do my thing. Great to see you, mate. Liam Duggan join you on Back Chat this week. How was he? Did he offer a bit? A few gags, a few insights? Look, Duggo, one of the nicest human beings you'll ever come across. So um, it, there was some great insight. Um, we gave him a bit of a grilling on the captain's day because, of course, Liam Duggan is not the captain of West Coast Eagles. Look, it, it, was, it was some humorous uh, chat because he played a pretty straight back. Um, wasn't happy with the placement in between two ruckmen. Uh, felt that his, uh, maybe the scaling was incorrect because he was bigger than Zach Merritt but looked smaller. Well, I'm bigger than Zach Merritt. I know that for a fact, but I look like half his size. So what's happened? What's happened there? I don't know if my chair was... <laughs> well, first of all, they put me in between Wits and Gorn, who yeah. like, are two of the biggest men you'll ever stand next to, let alone sit down and next to. And like, like, you're sitting yeah, on Yes, so I'm sitting and I, don't, I reckon my chair's a little bit further back. Very humorous from Duggo. You say that he's the nicest bloke, possibly off-field, but this is a, a certainly one of the meanest hits uh, we'll see of 2023. Uh, we're apparently meant to set a miss a couple of weeks through that one. Bang. How close were you to that and how instrumental is that play in terms of lifting the team, unfortunately uh, eliminating one of their players for the day? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting incident given last week all the talk was the bump is dead. and and. Uh, that's executing the bump in a way that, look, there's been an injury, but this is a contact sport and, and that does happen. Uh, I, I would say the hospital hand pass probably caused that more than Liam lining him up from a long way away. But a bump like that, look, I, I've talked about it a bit this week in, in other avenues. I think it's a, it's a real 50-50 call if bumps like that are even dead because you get that slightly wrong. Duggo had left his feet. Um, you know, it, does, it doesn't, have, not much has to change for that to hit him in the head and then Duggo's missing four to five weeks. So. Great hit. I really like it. I was a physical player when I played and I like seeing the physicality now and I don't want to see that out of the game, but it's it's a really fine line. And unfortunately, it's not the action, it's what happens after the fact. So if Young Ware ends up hitting his head on the ground there, Duggo's probably in trouble. So they're the things you've got to weigh up as a player, which is very easy sitting here talking about with a table in front of us, a couple of cameras rolling around. On the field, you got about 0.2 of a second to make that decision. I don't know if you can change your mind there. So well done by Duggo, but uh, could have gone either way. Elijah Hewitt makes his debut, pick 14 in last year's draft. Starts a sub, almost has the clearance of the year for a first touch in a first gamer. Talk to me about what you saw out of him and uh, how you feel about debuting as a substitute. Yeah, I saw him go into the middle when he came onto the ground. Uh, captain was in there, Luke Shuey, and, and knowing Luke uh, very well, he would have made sure that um, Elijah was go-to for that stoppage, and he was, and he just had a little fumble. Look, I think he would have learnt a lot out of coming onto the ground. Look, it's not an easy position to be in, um, being a sub. You're running up and down the sidelines like that. You can see Luke Shuey talking to him there. You're going to be go-to. We're going to make this happen. Um, look, it didn't go his way, but he would have learnt a, a lot. I think my first game, I sat on the bench till almost half time and there was no sub back in those days. So that probably says about me as a footballer. <laughs> but that's worse because you know that you're a chance to come on. Hewitt is well aware that he's not coming on for a while. It has changed for a little bit though because you can make that. He would have known he was playing. Whereas sometimes the vest in years gone by, you may not actually come on. Mm. So he knew he would have been playing regardless. Did a good job. A um, couple of big tackles on him. 
Um, but that's how footy goes. So uh, that's the step up. That's what's required. And, and we'll see better from him, I'm sure. Doesn't mind the camera, the young fella. And he did catch up with us uh, to discuss what the debut was like. It was incredible having all the boys throwing Gatorade on you. It was very similar to what you see when you're watching the game, I guess. But um, yeah, the feeling's different when you actually get a win. The first ever game, they get a win, and then they get Gatorade bath. It was awesome. You just feel sticky and gross for the next probably 20 minutes while you're waiting in the team meeting, and then you get to have a shower. So for 20 minutes, you're just in torture. So probably don't do it, but I guess it's probably part of the experience. You can't say no. Can you concur with that? Just being a wet mess, waiting for the meeting to end, just shower, begging for one? Or it's one? not great. It's not a great feeling. I mean, it's, it looks good, but it's not a great feeling. Uh, I, you I, were a pest with the bottles. Yeah, so I've, I'm sure I could find vision of you being an well, absolute I used, irrit. Well, I used to target people like you if you hang, hung too close to the, to the circle. But um, I think these guys would have. The, the, the great advice you give young players is take your boots off because at least your boots don't end up sticky the next week. Yep. Um, but not a great feeling sitting cold and sticky in the team meeting. Now, uh, there was a curtain raiser that caught many people's eyes. It was the Owls, the older, wiser, larger, slower Eagles. Mm. I was wondering why you weren't out there. Surely you weren't fearing an injury before your Fox call. But these guys were moving so slow out there. They were almost getting parking tickets by Optus Stadium staff. Larger, slower is the emphasis here. Older, wiser, yes, but larger, slower. Look, I've got a couple of, maybe a couple of arrows to shoot. Sam Butler. I mean, talks a big game, um, always been very vocal. He looked one of the fittest amongst them. Oh, look, he looked fit, but I saw him, he's just, his touch was no good. He couldn't, he couldn't take a clean ball, no ground balls, couldn't handball. Zero prep it, from it was, it was average. Mm. Um, Brett Hetty was running around trying to line people up. He was trying to shirt front, so the bump's not dead for Brett Hetty. He put his son on his backside a few times, <laughs> illegally, his son reckons. It was, it was good to watch. It was good seeing some of the legends of the footy club been around again. I want to see you back out there next time. Don't forget, fans, West Coast Connect is back as well for 2023, offering a great opportunity for Perth business owners. Scoey, take note. Yes. To access the Eagles' unique network contacts. Memberships are just 995 with three key events throughout the year. And the first is happening here on April 28, featuring Jay Kennedy here at Minres Park, the home of the West Coast Eagles. So get along to that one if you can. Massive game this week, Scoey, at the Derby. You working it? Uh, yes, I'll be working Fox Footy as well, 6PR. Excellent. So a bit of an underwhelming start from Frio. You don't need to hear that. You're probably getting reminded on the daily yes, in the socials, especially for, I think you and I picked them to finish quite high. So what are the main areas to watch for this contest? Look, they haven't started well, but they, they could have been in this position last year as well. They lost their, they, they won one of their games by one point and they lost another to St Kilda last year. So realistically, they've probably started quite similarly to last year and we know what they were able to do for the rest of the year. So I think... Um, Simo's uh, saying always rings pretty true in these times is it's never as good as it seems and never as bad as it seems. It's somewhere in the middle. So to be honest, West Coast aren't going as well as everyone's saying. Um, they've got some things to work on and Freo's not going as poorly as everyone's saying. So I think it's going to be a really even derby. I don't know who's going to win. Um, Fremantle will need to work on uh, their, their, their clearance work around the stoppage, um, which, which is a West Coast improvement area too. Um, their ball movement, which we've seen West Coast improve last week, but they need to continue on that. So Fremantle's ball movement's been stagnant at times and it doesn't give their forwards the opportunity to do what we saw Jake Waterman do um, in the game against uh, GWS. And they've got a couple of combinations that aren't working. The forward line looking a bit rusty, their, their ruck combination has lacked a bit of connection. But again, I, I just don't, I don't buy into the fact they're a bottom four side or anything like that. They're a very good team, just hasn't started the season well. It shapes for a terrific derby. You talk about the ruck combination and the matchup this weekend is going to be a keen one to watch. Bailey Williams, a much more improved performance this week than the Kangaroos game. It'll be a big ask for him and Jake Waterman basically to battle Jackson and Darcy. Throw your coach's hat on for him for a minute. What yeah. would you be doing? I mean, it worked quite well against GWS with Jake against um, Riccardi. Um, so Waterman against Riccardi. A well, couple then, you, then you got Oscar and, and JD taking that ruck yeah. in the forward 50. Yeah, well. but yeah, they're certainly not keen to get a Jack Darling or an Oscar Allen into the main centre bounce. They want to play them as forwards. So Don't want to see Dom Sheed there again, do you? Well, no. You, you either have to roll Waterman as your backup ruck again, or, or you've got to look at someone like a Harry Edwards, or um, I'm not sure where Barnett is at. Um, with his development, but can you ever go Harry Edwards back up ruck and then sling him down back? Is it no? I've done that in the waffle, um, <laughs> rotating back and ruck, yep. and it's not possible. It's actually why? not possible. Tell me why. Um, I mean, as look, look, I'm going to sound like an, an old grumpy backman, which is exactly what I am. Mm. Um, I, I just think you're dictated to um, your running is dictated to as a backman. You know, um, as a forward, you can rest if you want to rest. You can 
just loop around and go rest in the goals. Whereas as a backman, if your man wants to lead, you've got to go with him and you get found out very quickly. So it's not a great spot to rest as a backman. I'm not saying it's harder down there, but it is. You kind of are, yep. So Shannon Hearn, he moves into equal 50th for the AFL Games record alongside Nathan Berg from St Kilda. Just a fair effort with plenty more up his sleeves to come. How good is that? 50th all time. Yeah, it's amazing. Look, I was going to say I can't believe he's still playing, but I can because he's never ageing. Um, he, he just does the same things. He's still consistent. He's still taking kick outs. Uh, you know, he hasn't resigned himself to a back pocket and not doing much. So he looks like uh, every much the leader out there still, um, which, which is great. But he's probably stripped back that official status a bit. Wow, interesting you mentioned stripped back. So I want to show you this clip. Oh, boy. Fox footy, half time in the rooms, maybe pick a better time. Bunger, another shirt off. We've gone back to back episodes of a shirtless Bunger. How many rounds can we keep it going, you reckon? Look, I wouldn't be surprised if Bunger requested that camera shot, but the way he's going, he's just getting a little bit ahead of himself in his 45th year in the AFL. <laughs> Look, um, tongues will be wagging again. I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining. Yeah, mine included. Don't forget to be there for round four's clash against the Demons, a monster on Sunday, Arvo. 320. Crowd support really does make all the difference and you being there will do so. Tickets on sale through Ticketmaster. The club has also premium sales experiences like some of these mint corporate open air boxes. Scoey, I don't know if we'll find you in there, just absolutely devouring the food and beverage. Mm. But if you want to know more, go to eagleshospitality.com.au. I want to finish on this one. Uh, I don't know if you caught on the couch or 360 it was, where Luke Parker mic'd up for a game, camera following him around. Let's have a real quick listen to it. Yeah, Des! Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> right on! I think they do Thoughts on that? How long until it's happening once a week? And would you ever have done it back in your day? Um, thoughts on it? I, I, did, I didn't say it, but great access. I think that's what... You know, fans are just dying for, for real inner sanctum, insight, access. So I, I love it. Um, would I have done it? Yeah, probably. They wouldn't have been able to use too much of the material, I wouldn't have thought. There would have been a lot of huffing and puffing. But, but I mean, that's how cool is that? If You can see what happens out in the game. I'd be, I'd be very interested to see what they edited out. They mm -hmm. would have had some stuff that would have come across the microphone, I reckon. <laughs> I probably can't use that one. Correct. Good on you, Scully. Great to have your company again this week. That is it for Inside Swoop, courtesy of Jim Beam. Derby wins. So we're back here celebrating again. Sounds good. Looking forward to it.